The Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 3, probably one of the most hyped phones of 2021, but does it live up to that hype? Let's talk about it here on MQAN Reviews. One of two new folding smartphones that Samsung announced. Now I've already reviewed and covered the Z Flip 3 in a separate video and you can check that out at the end. But the Z Fold 3 is interesting. So the Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 3 is still an incredibly impressive smartphone, still gets a lot of attention when you're opening this out in public. And from a design perspective, not much has really changed, but there are subtle design differences, particularly between this and the previous generation Z Fold 2. If I put them side by side, the first thing that you'll notice is that it is slightly thinner and to the feel slightly lighter than the Z Fold 2. I think visually one of the differences that you can tell this hinge system over here feels to be a bit more tucked in on the Z Fold 3 as opposed to the Z Fold 2. And also the hinge system when you're opening and closing it feels slightly more robust, more sturdy than the Z Fold 2. Now, as far as looking around the device, I mean, you've got things in exactly the same place, USB-C port down there at the bottom, speakers both at the bottom and then the top. On the rear, you'll notice that the camera layout is I mean, it's pretty much the same, but it's just changed slightly. Although they're the same size, 6.2 inch dynamic AMOLED display, on this, we now have support for 120 Hertz refresh, whereas the older Z Fold 2 has that cap to 60 Hertz. So a noticeable difference, particularly when you're swiping and using this day to day. So that 6.2 inch display will then open out to that 7.6 inch larger display. This is the dynamic AMOLED display. It's an infinity flex display. That crease is there. Not much has changed. It's still noticeable when you're swiping through and when you're looking at it from different angles. But being totally honest, this is something that will disappear from view when you're using it. I mean, I've been using the Z Fold 2 and I know it's there, but it's not necessarily noticeable when I'm viewing media, playing games, whatever I might be doing on this larger main display. One of the big updates this year is that display will now support the S Pen for functionality. So if you're a fan of that, that's certainly something that you will enjoy. It would have been nice to see the S Pen perhaps incorporated into the hardware itself, a bit like what we've seen with the Note. Don't know if that's gonna happen next year, but that would be a really cool uh, addition. I think we can all agree, Samsung really know how to put a display together. And on the Z Fold 3, it's absolutely stunning, particularly using this main display for whatever, media consumption or anything else. It is a real, real joy. Now, this year on the hardware perspective, Samsung have focused on durability. There are a couple of things that they've done, both for the Z Fold 3, but also for the Z Flip 3. One of them is using Armour Aluminium for durability and also giving this a water rating, still not dust resistance. And that is the major issue when it comes to this hinge system. Neither this nor the Z Flip 3 are really happy to be around dust, so you still need to be careful. All right, so when it comes to biometrics, this has an incorporated fingerprint scanner in the power button over there. It's actually a much natural way of using this to unlock the device. I did have issues, however, with that front-facing camera. So I have this set up so that I can use it for face unlock with and without glasses, and I found that with glasses, it would take a couple of attempts. So I'm not sure why that was the case there. Performance on this has been solid. 12 GB of RAM paired up with the Snapdragon 888 5G chipset, that means 5G ready. But also, none of this confusion between Exynos and another chipset depending on which part of the world you're in. I think that's a good move and you would expect that from a smartphone that's priced like this. So that's encouraging. Day-to-day -day use, flawless. Like whether it's multitasking or multimedia heavy or gaming, whatever it might be, I haven't noticed any lag, any situation, it's just really fluid and that's very, very encouraging. Now, regarding performance, we have to talk about software because this is running Android 11, it's running One UI. Samsung have paid very, very close attention to the way that the software and functionality works with this. I'm finding myself using flex mode a lot more. This is the ability to kind of open the display up to a certain part and basically use more of that display. The camera works very well uh, with flex mode. Even apps like YouTube are very, very useful in this format. And then multitasking. On that main display, I mean, you can have a bunch of different windows, bunch of different apps moving between them. And it is really, you know, it's very smooth, but it's also super, super productive as well. Now, 
as much as I liked using this device, let's talk about some of the stuff that I wasn't impressed with, starting off with the battery life. So this sports a 4,400 milliamp hour battery, slightly less than last year's Z Fold 2. And when you factor in that this is also running the Snapdragon 888 chipset, and you'd assume that Samsung's software element would perhaps optimize the battery life, I wasn't getting better battery life. And I think this is important because a lot of users of the Z Fold 3, unlike let's say the Z Flip 3, are gonna be more than likely heavier users of their smartphone. Plug this off at about 8 a.m. in the morning, use this all the way up through to about 2 p.m., uh, sometimes even before that, and then I would have to plug this back in. Now bear in mind, I really didn't turn anything off. I mean, both of those displays were using adaptive refresh for 120 hertz. I had this synced up with the Galaxy Watch 4 and the Galaxy Buds, more on those two a little later on, but it certainly was a drain on the battery life. I think the front-facing display being 120 hertz is gonna be uh, more of a drain of the battery life. And then days that I was using that main display for more time would also have a negative impact on the battery life. But having said that, you do have fast charging, wired fast charging. Um, I was using a 25 watt uh, plug, so obviously that doesn't come in the box, so it meant that I was getting reasonable charge times, about 50% in half an hour, slightly less than that. It does also support wireless charging and reverse wireless charging also. Now, another thing to talk about is when it comes to the camera. Essentially, we haven't seen any hardware changes between this and previous generations. In fact, it's the same hardware. It would have been nice to see Samsung perhaps experiment, given that there's no Note series this year so far, uh, to improve on the camera capabilities with the Z Fold 3. Now, I don't think the Z Fold 3 is aiming at the same kind of market, the consumer market as let's say the S21. So the requirements from the camera probably won't be the same, but it still would have been nice to see Samsung do something uh, make some improvements to the cameras. Generally speaking, they do perform some good photography and also videography. In normal lighting, everything from the ultra wide all the way up to about 4X does produce some good shots. Bear in mind, this does have that telephoto lens as well. That certainly helps get you better shots from a zoom capability. Normal lighting, you're gonna get a good range of color saturation, vibrancy, still slightly oversaturated to my liking, but this is really a personal thing at this point. I think Samsung still does a very, very good job with their photography. When it comes to video, you'll notice that the video capability is still pretty impressive from this camera module. So this is a look at video quality shot with the Z Fold 3 UHD 60 frames per second with steady mode turned off. Consider this to be like the default for video. And uh, as I move around and walk around, I think it does a pretty decent job overall. Okay, so this is an example of what the video quality looks like with the front facing camera. So this is not on the main display, but rather on the cover display. Again, shot UHD, 60 frames per second with stable mode turned off. I think it does a pretty decent job. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. It's a really nice day here. So here's an example with the front facing camera on the main display. This is the one that has the under the display camera. Now the first thing that you'll notice is that generally from a quality perspective, it's not as high as the video or the photos that you get with the rear or the front facing on the cover camera. And the other thing is that this overall look both for photos and videos is incredibly like hazy, washed out, milky. Um, that's the best way to describe it. And you'll notice that particularly when there's a sun in the background. Now, I don't really think that this is really there to be used uh, for video recording or photos generally. I think this is more for kind of video calls perhaps. Um, you know, that's the only kind of reasonable use for this, but I don't think you're gonna get any great quality photos or videos with this front-facing camera. Now, alongside the Z Fold 3, I've also been testing out two other Samsung products that were announced at the Unpacked event. Starting with these, these are the Galaxy Buds 2. They're actually a really nice pair of in-ear headphones. They still have that similar styling and design. These now fit between the standard buds and the pro version, so they're a good option to go with. They support active noise cancellation, and they've got an incredibly good fit in the ear, particularly customized with the 
tips on the end. There's also another update that Samsung have done, and that's something called Deep Neural Network that gives you clear audio, particularly when you're on calls on the other person's end. So it differentiates between the sound of the voice, but also the outside or surrounding sound to give you very, very good clear audio quality. The other product that I've been testing out is this cool watch. This is the Galaxy Watch 4 Classic. Now, this is actually available in two variations. The Classic, which is this 46 millimeter size with the stainless steel finish and this bezel on the front and a non-classic version, which is smaller, made out of armor aluminum, and it doesn't have this physical bezel on top. Now, I've actually enjoyed using this. I've not been a fan of the past, Galaxy watches from Samsung, but there are major, major improvements to this when it comes to functionality and getting more out of the data available. On the front, you have that beautiful 1.4 inch Super AMOLED display, and then you get access to different tiles that you can customize via the rotating bezel or touch interface. But the big update this year is in Wear OS, because this will give you functionality to download a range of different apps for your watch. On the back, Samsung have also included a range of different sensors. So you get access to things like sleep, stress. You also get access to ECG readings as well, which is now available in this part of the world and also blood oxygen as well. There's also a new sensor in here, which is the compass sensor. I think the Galaxy Watch 4 is a big upgrade from the previous generation of Galaxy Watch. And, you know, it makes a lot of sense. I think if you're tied into the Galaxy ecosystem, and by that, I mean, you have a Galaxy smartphone, then this makes a lot of sense. There are quite a few features. In fact, these two buttons here, physical buttons are hardwired. One of them for Bixby, and the other one is actually for Samsung Pay. So from that perspective, it makes a lot of sense. This watch really ties in well with any of those Galaxy smartphones. And that there is a wrap. The Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 3. I've thoroughly enjoyed my time using this device. As I said in my Z Flip 3, in an age where so many smartphones are looking and feeling the same, I think Samsung have done very well to differentiate themselves with at least a range of devices from the competitors. And yes, there are competitors with folding smartphones. I've handled quite a few of them, but I think what we're getting with the Z Fold 3 is a much more refined, much more polished folding smartphone. Samsung took that risk, the initial risk years ago, and what they've got in the subsequent years is a very, very good folding smartphone. Now, yes, the price for the Z Fold 3 is still very expensive for most people, but I guess that's a price that you have to kind of consider paying when you want something so different. This is really one of those devices that isn't intended for everyone. The Z Flip 3, I think, is much more of a mass market folding smartphone. What, what the Z Fold 3 does is really give us an indication of what the possibilities are. And that's where it really excels and shines. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below, not only about folding smartphones in general, but also about the Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 3. And if you've enjoyed this video, be sure to smash that like button and check out this other video over here. I'll see you there next.